<laughs> listen, we got listen, right. We've talked to we listen. We have talked to all sorts of characters today from all over America, all over the place, but we got the man in the house. Gary Blissett is in the place. Gary Blissett, for the old school Brentford in the house, you know exactly who he is. Manchester City in the cup, in the rain, in the absolute pissing rain. Remember that one as well. That was one hell of a game and it was one hell of a time. Peterborough away, 1992. When we weren't meant to win the league, we weren't meant to win the league at all, but we won the league and they took the trophy up to Birmingham City. They were disrespectful to us. They took the trophy to Birmingham when we won the league. We didn't have a trophy to carry when we won the league. But Gary Blissett still come down here because he holds no grudges because he's a massive B. Gary, lovely to meet you again. What's happening? All good, all good. You like that intro? No. Great, great intro, great intro. Um, listen, Brentford don't care. What goes where, who goes where, we know who we are. And that's all we worry about. We know who we are. We know who we are. Listen, but this is scary. What I'm going to do here is that I, this is on an education thing because, listen, all the old school know who we are. And I, I'd love to get you back on. We did a 1989 FA Cup podcast. We had Alan Cockrum on. We had Steve Perriman. We had all sorts of characters. It was a brilliant, brilliant podcast as well. Because we said to people, if you know your history, they need to know your history. And we need to know the tales from people. So that was wicked. But we'll get you back on for another tingle, I'm saying. But what I want to know is that I want people to know that you were proper legend. Legendary. You. you scored enough goals, ridiculous amount of goals for Brentford back in the day. You and Dean Holdsworth were a partnership on a next level, right? And people are talking about, listen, Ivan, wicked player, all these players, they're all wicked players, but you, in the, in the lower tiers, were an absolute hero for us, and you're here today. Listen, we chat quite a lot, as yeah. you know, we chat a lot all the time, but it's good to see you and meet you in person today as well. But talk to me, yes. because I know that your history of Brentford goes back far. Original Man City fan, but however... Still a Man City fan. Still a Man City <laughs> fan, however, you love the bees. Just talking about your days back then, just, just, just give us just give a while because there was a period where you were on fire. Yeah. I mean, listen, we, you, first of all, you have to have a good team for one player to play well. So it's a team effort. Without my teammates, you know, I wouldn't have scored the goal. So who are your teammates? Well, up front, obviously, Neil Smiley on the right. Smiley, wicked player. Marcus Gale on the left. Of course. Dean Holdsworth, myself. That's Dean Holdsworth? Correct. So, you know, and we had a back four that was pretty strong as well. Tottenham, uh, former Tottenham player, Brian Statham. Brilliant player. On the left, we had the Bulldog, Billy Manuel, and down the middle, Millen Bates or Terry Evans. So we had, we had strength in depth. Um, we had the best coach, obviously, Steve Perryman. A Spurs legend. So talk to us about Steve. I mean, how good was Steve? Steve was, for me, personally, if you, if you look at Pep Guardiola and what he does with his players and how he improves his players, that's what Steve did with our players. My technique improved dramatically under Steve Perriman. And that's really interesting because, again, we had numerous managers before then and we were OK. But also when Steve came in, we took to another level. And I was, I was almost gutted when he left because it was like, it was, it's a bit of a cloud. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I do know the re one of the reasons, but um, that's not for me to say. No. Um, but he was, a, he was a magician with technique. And that's where me and Marcus learn our technique. You know, everybody can run all day. You know, you can jump and win headers. But if you can't pass and control the ball and find space, you're not going to be a footballer. And he perfected that with us. So listen, I mean, we're going to cut the chase here as well. You've been watching the Bees. You now live in America. We're going to probably talk to you again and we'll talk to you about a little bit more about your history because you've got a whole academy thing going on here. You're yeah. developing players, young players in America. It's going very, very well. But yeah. you also sit there and you watch the bees. We talk all the time about stuff that's going on. And you, you're very impressed with what's going on in Brentford. What's the difference between you, your team, 
and this team now? Oh, I don't think we've got long enough to talk about it, but there's a multitude of things, a multitude, and it starts at the top. It starts with Matthew Benham, and it runs through the board, the staff. Look at these, all these people here, sat together, you know, just enjoying each other's company. You so know? this didn't happen in your day? No, there was Steve, uh, Steve Perryman, the great Phil Holder, and there was a physio, Roy Clare. That was it. I remember them. Yeah. Two subs, no goalkeeper on the bench. And this, this is the difference. But these lot can't, the team can't function without these lot functioning. So it's just fucking brilliant. And, and, and a question I'm going to ask you, because obviously you live in America now, but yeah. and you've come back here, which is cool. And like I said, I chat to you all the time, but you've got a... You, you've, been out, you've been out the picture, the Brentford picture for a while, yeah. just for your own reasons, which is fine. Yeah. But now you come back here, do you feel part of the club? I've never lost that, never lost that, you know, that feeling for the club. And I do come back on a regular basis, once, twice, three times a year to watch games. So that's never been lost. I've always felt welcome when I've come back to Brentford. But these last six days, these last six days have been special for me. And why, why is that? Why? Because I, I felt part of the team again. I felt part of the club again. I've been welcomed like I, I never went away, you know. I, I, I'm going to ask you, did you feel that you didn't feel welcome before that? No, 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 no. What do you mean? I'm just wondering because you said now you really feel part of the team. Did you feel that beforehand you didn't feel part of it? I've always you... felt that. I've always felt that. But this is on a different scale. Now I'm in the club, you know, and that's the difference than just being on the outskirts with the fans. Now I'm inside the club and it's just, it's fantastic. Next season, because I know that, OK, it's a weird one. Brentford beat Man City twice this season. But yes. you, were, you were quite delighted about that, though, weren't you? I was very happy. <laughs> As a Man City fan. I was very happy, especially when the final whistle went in the Champions League. <laughs> I bet you were. So next season, yep. are you going to go for a Brentford double again? I don't care. I don't care. So long as Brentford continue to flourish in the Premier League, I don't give a fuck who they beat, who they don't beat. They just have to stay in the Premier League. UBs. Obviously, the higher, the better. But UBs. UBs. UREDs.